Now that you know how to tell a Grunstead Lowry acid and base depending on what it does in a formula, did you know that there are some substances that can act as either an acid or a base? It's true. These are called amphiprotic substances, substances that can either give off hydrogen and act like an acid or pick up hydrogen and act like a base. Amphiprotic, kind of like amphibians can do both land and water. Amphiprotic, protic for proton, which is H+, can either give off H+, or pick up H+. Amphiprotic. Now, a great example of this would be water. In this reaction, HCl is losing a hydrogen. It's an acid. H2O is picking up a hydrogen and becoming that. That's a base. So therefore, water is acting as a base in that reaction. In this reaction, NH2 is becoming NH3, it's acting as a base. And H2O is becoming OH-, it's losing an H, it's acting as an acid. In this reaction, water acts as an acid. Because water can act as an acid or a base, it can either gain H or lose H, it's considered to be amphiprotic. Another name for it is amphoteric, but I personally prefer amphiprotic, it's a little bit more descriptive. Now, if you want to base it on the formula, it's really simple to see if it's amphiprotic or not. You see, because acids must contain H. And in order to pick up H+, the ion in question must have a negative charge. So if the formula has H and a negative charge, that means it can act as an acid by losing that hydrogen, or as a base by picking up hydrogen. So in this formula, H2S, because there's only hydrogen, this is acting as an acid only. But in the formula HS minus, it can lose an H, acid, or it could gain an H because it has a negative charge. H plus, minus, attraction, it works. H3PO4 can only act as an acid. It has hydrogens to lose. H2PO4- can either lose one of its hydrogens or because of its negative charge it can gain another hydrogen. So if the formula has hydrogen and a negative charge it can be amphiprotic. In addition to that we've already seen how water can be amphiprotic and the reason why water can be amphiprotic is it can either lose a hydrogen or it can pick up another hydrogen through coordinate covalent bonding. The other molecule that does this is ammonia. NH3 can act as an acid if it were to lose a hydrogen, but it can act as a base if it were to pick up a hydrogen to form a coordinate covalent bond. So water and ammonia also can be amphiprotic even though they don't have a negative charge. On AE reference table C, anything that's listed on the acid side can act as an acid. Anything that's listed on the base side can act as a base. What's this H doing here? Well, it's there to balance the reaction. I mean, HI turns into I minus because the H plus 1 is given off. The base would be this stuff right here. If, on the other hand, you can find the substance on both sides of this table, that's when you know it's antiprotic. For example, you can only find these guys on the left side, the acid side of this table. But if it contains H and a negative charge, like HSO4-1, not only can it act as an acid, but look, it's over here on the base side too. So it can act as either an acid or as a base. It's amphiprotic. HF can only be found on the acid side, but something that has hydrogen and a negative charge can be found on both sides. HSO3-1 as an acid, HSO3-1 as a base. HCO3-1 as an acid. HCO3-1 as a base. So that's the other way you can tell if it's amphiprotic. If it's only on the acid side, then it's only an acid. If it's only on the base side, like Br-1 and Cl-1, it's only a base. But if you can find it on both sides of the table, that means it can act as either an acid or a base, and therefore it's amphiprotic.
When an acid loses a hydrogen, it becomes a base, and we call that a conjugate base, because it's the base that's formed specifically when that acid loses a hydrogen. You could also say that when I minus 1 gains a hydrogen, it forms an acid, HI. We call HI the conjugate acid of I minus 1. They're different only by one hydrogen, only one H plus, only one proton. So the conjugate base of HNO3 is NO3 minus 1. The conjugate acid of NO3 minus 1 is HNO3. They're inextricably linked as conjugate pairs. When HF loses a hydrogen, it forms a conjugate base, F minus 1. When F minus 1 picks up a hydrogen, it forms the conjugate acid, HF. So, let's sum it up. Let's see if we can figure out what things are acids, bases, or amphiprotic. SO4 minus 2, it has a minus charge. That means it's a base. H2S, it only has the H. That means it's an acid. CO3 minus 2, that means it's only got a negative charge and no H. It's only a base. HSO3 minus 1, it has both an H and a negative 1 charge. It's amphiprotic. F minus 1 only has a negative charge, no hydrogen. It's only a base. To get the conjugate acid, we can add H plus to the formula. To get the conjugate base, we can subtract an H plus from the formula. Or we could look at the chart. SO4 minus 2 is a base. What's its conjugate acid? SO4 minus 2 is a base. Its conjugate acid is HSO4 minus 1. H2S is an acid. H2S is an acid. Its conjugate base is HS minus 1. Notice not only are we losing a hydrogen, we're also going down in charge by one. For the base, not only are we gaining a hydrogen, the charge becomes more positive by one because it's H plus one that's being either lost or gained. CO3 minus two is a base. It's conjugate acid, HCO3 minus one. HSO3 minus one is amphiprotic. If HSO3 minus 1 is an acid, its conjugate base is SO3 minus 2. On the other hand, if HSO3 minus is a base, then its conjugate acid is H2O plus SO2. At least that's what the table says. Or you could just simply add an extra H plus to it and make it H2SO3. Either one of these would be perfectly acceptable. F minus 1 is a base. Its conjugate acid is HF. That's how you can find the conjugates. Find out where it is on the table, and on the other side is its conjugate. And if it's amphiprotic, then it has two possible conjugates. The other way to find conjugate pairs is in reactions. HCl and Cl- are conjugate pairs. The H has one more hydrogen than the Cl has. This is the acid. This is its conjugate base. H2O and H3O are conjugates. The H3O plus has one more hydrogen, it's the conjugate acid, and H2O is the conjugate base. So that's how you identify conjugate pairs in a reaction. NH3's conjugate is NH4. NH4 has more hydrogen, it's the acid, and NH3 is the base. H2SO4 has one more hydrogen than HSO4. So that's the acid, and that's the conjugate base. HBr's conjugate is Br minus. This is the acid in the pair. This is the base in the pair. NH2 and NH3 are inextricably linked for life. NH3 is the acid because it has one more hydrogen, and NH2 minus as the base. I want you to notice that on any given side, there's only one acid, one base. One acid, one base. One acid, one base. One acid, one base. If you find yourself with two acids on one side, you did it wrong.